Why is it that young people are poorer than their parents' generation? It was once taken for granted that each successive generation would be more prosperous than the one before it, as the world became a better and more interconnected place. But this has not happened for our generation. Millennials and tail end Gen Xers are falling behind, finding the post recession world a difficult and expensive place within which to build a future. Soaring house prices, a soulless jobs market, and an aging population are often blamed for this. But are young people really worse off than their parents and grandparents? Let's check it out. Welcome to Money and Shackle, the investment channel that sets you and your finances free. This is Andy, I'm Ben, and if you like what we say, hit the like button and click subscribe. Also, we have hundreds of pounds of welcome bonuses that you can snap up if you sign up to one of the investment platforms listed on the office page of moneyunshackled.com. There's also a ton of investment articles on there that you can read while you're bored at work. The link is in the description below. Let's get into the video. Why you feel poorer. Number one, rubbish pay. The jobs market has always offered insulting pay rises to hardworking employees. But since the 2008 economic crash, we have also seen starter salaries and pay grades stagnate and fall with inflation and professions devalued. Unskilled immigration has also infamously played an important factor in the stagnation of pay rises at the bottom end of the job market. Though Brexit is expected to correct this as employers hire British born workers to prepare for the uncertainty of labour access ahead. By trade, I am a chartered accountant. In my parents' generation, being a chartered accountant meant that you were wealthy by default, but it's not enough today. Even though I was paid well relative to my peers, it is my investments and side hustles that are my vehicles to wealth. Most jobs, even the high-end professional ones, are paid far less than their equivalents in the 90s were paid. You can no longer rely on a job for financial freedom. Number two, house prices are too high. Between the 20 year period 1996 and 2016, house prices rose 281% across the UK and 501% in London. To put this into perspective, a 2.5% inflation rate over 20 years would only be a 64% increase. The youth of today are expected to buy far more expensive homes with their far lower salaries. It's a recipe for disaster. Number three, forced to stay in the family home. We were both fortunate enough to have learned about investing in business early on and had both built up enough income streams to buy our respective houses in our 20s. But it is common for people to live at home well into their 30s to save money for a house deposit, taking away many freedoms that our parents' generation knew when they left home at 18, and making you feel poorer. Number four, your pension is a joke. Our parents and grandparents' generations enjoyed final salary pensions, meaning they were lucky enough to know that their income in retirement would be more or less in line with what they earned during their work time. Sadly, Workers in their 20s and 30s have really only ever known defined contribution pensions. You pay a little in, and so does your employer. It is estimated that most people on these modern pension schemes will be too poor to retire on their pensions when they get to retirement age, as they are saving too little of their salaries. This is likely because their rubbish salary only barely covers their rent and mortgage payments anyway, and they can't afford to save any higher. Final salary pensions were far too generous and ultimately unsustainable, and we agree that they had to go. We both understand that if you want to be wealthy in retirement, you need to start investing and building passive income streams now. It's not all bad though, surely. Odds are you're probably looking at a smartphone or at least have one in your pocket. Technological advances in the last decade have been incredible and the improvements to our lives are taken for granted. We can now shop online, invest in shares for free with a single click, watch TV on demand anywhere, navigate without paper maps, sell stuff on Facebook Marketplace and eBay, and run entire businesses from a laptop and mobile phone. The freedom and time-saving power that the internet and tech has given our generation was just not there for our parents' generation making life a little bit more difficult for them. Also, an uncomfortable truth of why young people are poorer is because we are far looser with our cash. How often do you go to the movies or out for a meal? 
For our parents' generation, this was a rare treat, and for our grandparents' generation, this was only on a special family occasion, such as a silver wedding anniversary, perhaps. Because the economy is so vibrant now, we are constantly tempted by brands, gadgets, and activities. We think our generation is guilty of overspend. A job for life. There is no longer such a concept as a job for life. People our age spend two or three years in a job before moving on to the next role out of career necessity. The jobs market is so fluid and full of opportunity following the reforms of the coalition government of 2010 that it is now easier and quicker to climb the career ladder by moving roles than by staying within one company. Employers know this and as such make little effort to retain and develop staff far easier to hire someone who already knows those skills. In the place of a job for life, we have now moved to the gig economy. More and more millennials are moving towards a multiple income approach, having several jobs and side hustles. The gig economy is a harsh place to be if forced into it due to a lack of money, but for those who choose this lifestyle, there is far greater freedom and life is rarely boring. A job for life offers security, the gig economy offers freedom. What can be done? Firstly, let's take a look at what the government can do for you, then we'll take a look at what other people can do for you, and finally, let's take a look at what you can do for yourself. The government could decide overnight to slash tax rates on entrepreneurs, recognising the many young people in the gig economy who are also our greatest innovators. And the government could and should scrap stamp duty taxes on property transactions, or at least reduce them to a nominal 1%. Old people can't afford to downsize their homes as they are hit with thousands of pounds of stamp duty tax if they do, meaning young families cannot access this limited housing stock of three and four bedroom houses. We believe that tax cuts generally benefit everyone in an economy, so the fact that old people and young people would benefit from this tax cut is a great thing. It doesn't have to be zero sum. One popular idea that was widely reported on recently is the idea that your relatives could decide to skip a generation in inheritance or hand money down years before their deaths. The logic is that with people now living far longer than they used to, that their descendants are now inheriting that money in their 60s and 70s rather than when they used to in their 30s and 40s when it's most needed. By the time they're in their 60s and 70s, they're already financially comfortable. We don't agree with this though. We believe that it is up to you to get your finances in order and not to rely on a windfall from a future tragic life event. Anyone relying on inheritance for their financial freedom is A, not managing their money right and B, a little morbid. Take back control. Finally, what can you do for yourself? We encourage everyone to take back control of their finances and not let the modern world push you around. If you are feeling poor, then you need to build yourself new income streams. Check out our very popular video on side hustle ideas, linked to in the description below. And make sure to invest any surplus cash you make from it. The twin pillars of investing and starting businesses will set you financially free. Thanks for watching. On this channel, we talk a lot about personal finance, investing, and all things money. And if you want to see more great content, please click the subscribe button below. This is moneyunshackled.com. See you next time.